Hey, Justin Dyson here, Dyson Apiaries. A little chilly this morning here in December. I know uh, some of you watching may, may be thinking about getting into beekeeping, or maybe evaluating your inventory if you've got a few hives or something, trying to decide what to get and uh, why to get the various configurations. Um, gonna talk about the Langstroth hive today and the different types of uh, equipment that you may need different you know bottom boards boxes frames things like that um so that hopefully it'll help you make some decisions on that going forward stick right with me So I'm going to start off by just talking about like a basic configuration um, and then we're going to go from the bottom up and we're going to talk about the bottom boards, the different kinds of boxes and things like that. The way I personally run most of my hives is in this configuration over the winter time. I run two deeps and we'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, but I just kind of want to let you see that for a minute to kind of know that final look of the hive and then we'll talk about honey sutures and several other things as we as we get into it. So I'm gonna kind of break this down and we're gonna start talking about bottom boards and then we're gonna work our way up. So you got the first piece of equipment after a hive stand, I guess, um, to set this up on, but we're just gonna talk about the hives right now. We'll talk about um, where to place and how to place your hives in another video. But um, first off, we need a bottom board. This is called a bottom board. This is a solid bottom board. Um, our bottom boards that are cut out here and they will have a screen in there it's called a screen bottom board and most of those have a slot where you can slide a uh, it's a piece of like the the political sign type um, cardboard stuff to close that off for the winter time but um, I use solid bottom boards. I'll talk a little about screen bottom boards as well though. I use solid bottom boards. Um, if you'll notice here, this is a three quarter of an inch opening um, and your box sits on top like this. So it leaves a three quarters of an inch opening and it's closed in the back. Most of these bottom boards that you purchase are in a reversible format. So if we reverse them, we now have a 3 8 opening enclosed in the back. So 3 8 versus 3 quarter. Um, 3 8 is most commonly referred to as the B space uh, down to about uh, 5 sixteenths or so. Um, that's important in Langstroth hive configuration because if the bees have more space than, than that 3 8 of an inch, um, they will build a burr comb in that space and it makes it hard to manipulate the hive. If they have less than about five sixteenths, they will glue that together with propolis. And again, makes it difficult. So it's really important as we talk about this equipment to understand what B space is. Um, and we'll just refer to that as five sixteenths to three eighths. Um, so three quarter versus three eighths um people that you could run them either way the, the the bees will be just fine either way um in my area north carolina um three eighths would of course restrict the opening a little more less draft um less space for robbers to get in that kind of thing three quarter would probably allow them to cool their hive a little better in addition um, I have one laying here. In addition, if you wanted to use a, um, this thing's dirty. If you wanted to use a uh, entrance reducer, it's another important piece of equipment. Um, you can use that on the three quarter side. It won't work on the three eighths side. So while we're here, before I jump to screen bottom boards, I'll talk about entrance reducers, of course, 
you have this configuration with this wider opening it's uh, four or five inches and then if you rotate that you can narrow it down to just a three quarter by three eighths entrance so we would use this in the case that um the hive may be a little bit uh, weak or getting robbed by other bees in the apiary or something like that we could help that hive better defend their colony or maybe keep it warm but um, I don't necessarily use entrance reducers for <clears throat> for warmth. I use them for robbing and things like that. And the bees the bees will cluster up and and, and um, as long as we we orient our hives right, so we don't have a a wind blowing in the entrance. Uh, I, I personally don't feel like these serve a lot of purpose for that, but you know, everybody's got a differing opinion on that. So we'll talk about why do you solid board bottom boards versus screen bottom boards. I'm not going to tell you either way. I think there are, uh, um, I, I think the pros and cons are, are kind of the same for both. Um, a solid bottom board, in my opinion, lasts longer. It's more sturdy because we have solid wood here to hold this, this bottom board together. I personally prefer that. In addition, um, when we're moving bees or something like that, we're moving, moving these colonies with this type of bottom board, we have less risk of, you know, maybe something tearing that screen in the bottom or something like that. If we have them closed up to move them, we don't want that screen getting opened up. Um, I personally feel like they can uh, hold their own heat in the summer, so they don't need <clears throat> that additional ventilation from underneath. Now screen bottom boards, I got, I'm sorry I don't have one here to show you, but they're cut out around here and that would be um, laced with a uh, eighth inch screen or number eight screen wire. Um, those are used for some of the IPM strategies, integrated pest management strategies with Varroa mite. Um, there's some research out there to suggest that if the mite falls off of a bee onto a solid bottom board, it can recover and get back onto a bee whereas with a screen bottom board if that mite falls um, the school thought is that it would fall through the screen and onto the ground and it would not survive so talking about the phreatic stage of mites so that's one of the advantages um, additionally we don't have that debris on the bottom and, and, and things like that so again uh, it's personal preference um, whether or not you want to use screen bottom boards or solid bottom boards I use solid um, mainly <clears throat> mainly because of the durability this this piece of equipment is the bottom most piece of the hive it's holding all the weight it's close to the ground where there's moisture and things like that so I prefer to have a nice solid bottom board so the next piece of equipment would be our boxes or supers or high bodies whatever you want to call them and I failed to mention when we were talking about bottom boards that there are two different widths of standard line straw pipes now. Um, it's become more prevalent recently. As you can see here, this is a standard 10 frame width. Um, so we would put 10 frames one here. We would put 10 frames across here. Um, and there's also an eight frame configuration where only eight frames will fit. And so a standard 10 frame is 16 and a quarter of an inch wide outside to outside dimensions. And a eight frame, I believe is like 13 and three quarter. Um, I've seen a little variation in those. Now it's important to, uh, it's important to understand while we're talking about this back to that B space, as you work with different, um, as you work with different beekeeping suppliers um, you'll see some variation in the dimensions of these hives and so it's important to understand that one manufacturer may have this frame rest at this height whereas another may have that frame rest a little higher which causes the bottom B space to be different so if we're intermixing different types of equipment from different suppliers, we may see some variation there. So always kind of pay attention to where you're buying your equipment from, or if you're buying used equipment, 
take, take a ruler with you and check it and make sure it, it will fit in with your equipment. I've seen, you know, the, the width of 10 frame colonies um, vary by a half inch or more, plus or minus that 16 and a quarter. Um, so that will cause us to have an overlap on the edge. Again, just be, um, just be aware of that. Um, so the eight frame configuration, again, that's become popular recently. Uh, I think there's kind of two schools of thought or two advantages maybe to the eight frame. One is that it's in the more narrow configuration, more so like a, um, um, a tree trunk maybe. Um, I think it's a little abnormal for the honeybee to be in this wide of, of a configuration or not as used to being in that. So that's the school of thought there. Um, additionally, the weight difference. So if we're picking up a full super uh, 10 frame, it's going to be much heavier than an eight frame configuration of that same super. So we think about our back. We need to talk about the different super depth that we have. Uh, I talked about the width, the 16 and a quarter. The depth is always 19 to 7 eighths, give or take. And again, that depends on the manufacturer. Pay attention to bee space. Um, one of the, the most common, I would say, for a brood box, quote unquote, um, being our bottom most super. I call them high bodies. Some people call them deep supers. Um, but it is where the the deepest most frame would go and that allows for a nice um, unobstructed brood nest in there and that box is 19 and 5 eighths tall um, not to say everyone uses high bodies for the bottom um, some people use other sizes so we'll talk about the next um, size up would be the medium this is an eight frame configuration medium but it's still the same height and the medium sometimes called an illinois super is six and five eighths tall um some some people will use these as their brood box and use maybe three of those for a full brood box for for a colony of bees we'll talk a little more about actually configuring a hive here in a minute but that's that's the second size medium or illinois super six and five eighths and the final size is a shallow which is 5 and 11 sixteenths um probably most commonly used for a surplus super for honey we're going to remove um and again that's not always the case a lot of commercial beekeepers with um with equipment to, to move their supers around without having to manhandle those they'll use all deeps for their um, supers it's more efficient in their processing because they don't have to uncap as much, they don't have to handle as many frames, but they're also not having to pick, it, pick them up um, with their own back. Um, you could also use the mediums for surplus supers or shallows, and it's just a weight difference, honestly, um, in the different, the different ones. The next piece of equipment we're gonna need, or the next piece of equipment we're gonna maybe need it uh this is a hotly debated topic would be a queen excluder um and this would go just above our brood nest so we'll take this down for just a moment so just say this was just this was our only brood nest this queen excluder would go here and what that does is prevent the it allows the worker bees to come up through this wire here um, but this allows the queen from or drones from coming up through that and that just prevents especially if we've pinched our queen down into a smaller box and say we have a shallow super here um, and that's our honey we're taking off it prevents that queen from coming up through that um, through that queen excluder and into our honey super so we don't have to brood or anything up in our honey supers and we take it off it's nice all clean honey um, so that's what a queen excluder is a lot of people call them honey excluders uh, if you're using queen excluders and you're putting on supers a foundation a lot of times it's very difficult for the, to get the bees coaxed into going through that because they don't like going through it um, a lot of times uh, you have to coax them up with some nice drawn comb or a little bit of honey or something up there to make them come up there and inspect that and, and take care of that and once they start working that 
my experience is they'll go on through that queen excluder. But again, hotly debated topic and I'll let you make your own decision on whether or not to use queen excluders. Next piece of equipment we're going to need is something to close the top in. Um, so there are two primary, there are two primary types of lids. Um, commercial you may use something like this. Um, this is called a migratory top. Well, I'm gonna have a hole in the top. Um, this one's for a nuke, but you'll have a hole in the top uh, set up for a uh, a jar feeder or a bucket feeder or something like that. But this is a um, this is a migratory style top. This is the plywood one. Uh, you can make them a lot of different ways, but um, it's very lightweight, inexpensive. It won't last as long as the other type I'm going to discuss. Um, but if we're running a lot of bees, or if, say we need to move them, this this um, this type doesn't, doesn't this type doesn't hang off the edge um, so it makes it a little easier to move bees without having to remove the lids so the next type of uh, top we'll talk about is the telescoping cover telescoping cover um, most of these will be covered with metal on top makes them really durable um, they uh, have a lip that hangs down over the sides of the hive uh, so these offer some really nice protection for the hive it keeps the water out of the side boxes a little more so um, uh, it's got a nice durable top um, with the metal um, they are quite quite a bit more expensive than a migratory style lid um, but you know for the for the non-commercial beekeeper these will uh, last a, a good while and are probably the most common um, so anytime we use a telescoping top we have to we have to add one additional piece of equipment and that is an inner cover and i say have to um and i'll explain that in a minute um, some people might disagree with me but telescoping cover i mean uh inner cover and you see we've got a hole here we have a ventilation hole in the front it's flat on the bottom you know we got to maintain that b space and then we have a 3 8 um space on top and that goes that goes just below that telescoping top um, and it serves quite a few purposes i will say the reason i say it's a necessity i'll go ahead and say that the reason it is a necessity is because when we go to take this top off the bees will propolis down this lid to their box so if they if we don't use this and they've propolis that down to this box here we have no way to get this lid off other than jamming our hive tool into the side of this box and prying up so we're doing damage to our box we're prying out on this telescoping cover and uh, greatly decreasing its lifespan so when we put an inner cover in, typically this won't be glued down like it will be here. So we can just lift this up and it, it may have a little bit of propolis on it, but, but not so much that, that we can't get it off with just our hands. Um, and then when we get to this, it's simple to just run our hive tool right in the side, just like we're separating boxes. This piece will be glued down and we can separate that and work the colony. A couple other advantages or, or benefits to an inner cover. Um, let's take winter time for example. One of the biggest killers of honeybees in the winter is moisture. Um, so as that hot moisture laden air off of the bees from the respirations and things comes up, when it impacts a cold surface that is at or below dew point, that moisture in that air will condensate and drip back down on the bees. So with this configuration, with having that, with having that slight space here, it almost acts as an insulator. And this, the inner cover itself may not be at or below dew point, the top will. So as that moisture laden air hits this, it doesn't condensate. It comes up through this hole yes it may impact this and condensate the telescoping cover and condensate but 
it may drip back onto the inner cover. And if we have our hive tilted forward slightly like we should, that moisture should run toward the front of the colony and possibly out of this hole. Um, additionally, if we have our hive set up properly and we don't have any problems with robbing or we don't have a hive top feeder on or something like that, we want to always slide this cover forward. I'll try to show that to where there's, if we notice this telescoping top is a little bit larger in length than the actual box or inner cover itself. So we have a full B space here and it allows that air to come up through this hole and out through this ventilation hole. So it allows a little bit of ventilation to proceed up through the colony and hopefully get rid of some of that moisture laden air. So just a couple other purposes of, a, of an inner cover. Um, it is one more piece of equipment. It's one more thing that you have to take off the colony. But if you're using telescoping tops, it will keep you from damaging your equipment trying to get the tops off. So one of the next things we have to talk about is um, the frames. Uh, I have another video that I'll post the link to in the comments um, that, re that talks about assembling frames, different frame types, um, all that good stuff, different foundation types, and that uh, that's kind of a video in itself. But when we, when we set these colonies up, we need to make sure that we completely that we completely fill these boxes with, with frames. Let me see if I have 10 here. Um, yeah, this is a 10 frame box. And I know these are these are shallow frames um, in a deep box, and we definitely wouldn't want to do that. We need to put the correct frames in the correct box. So three different size boxes. There are also three different size frames. So we want to make sure that we're using the right ones. I want to go ahead and fill this box out to show. So there we have 10 full frames and those will need to be nice and tight together. As you see, there's a little bit of extra space on the sides. It's okay. Um, these frames always need to be nice and tight together or you leave a gap. They will fill that up. Again, we talk about bee space, they'll fill that up with propolis or they'll build bird combs. So if we want our combs to be drawn out nice and straight, we need to make sure these frames are tight together. So there's 10 frames in these boxes. There's eight in the eight frame style boxes. Um, where I was talking about um, the different styles of equipment, the way manufacturers build them. If we see here on this particular box, we have about a quarter of an inch below the bottom of that deep frame. And then on top of that frame, we have about an eighth of an inch. So that works out to our three eighths of an inch B space. So if we take a box that sets this, that sets this frame rest up, maybe even to where those frames sits even if we do that and then we mix it with a box that's configured like this one we're going to have a space too small between the boxes below the frames um, and they'll end up gluing those frames together and then we would have we would have difficulty pulling that frame out because it'd be stuck together underneath you're going to see a little bit of burr comb here and there on these but it should not be significant enough where you can't get a frame out. But if we start intermixing these boxes, we start having that problem where we where we can't, where we get these frames stuck together or we have a, a space that's too big. If we go reverse to what I was just talking about, um, get a space too big and we have massive amounts of burr comb here to deal with. And that just becomes a mess. You know, it's interweaved and we're mashing bees and everything we're taking apart. So really pay attention to that. And when you're buying equipment, and, and and try to try to at least stick with one maybe a couple manufacturers that that build their hives the same um i think that's i think that's really important another thing about these boxes that i didn't speak about is the different types of joints um this is what's called a finger joint i uh, don't have one laying here with me but there's also what's called a uh it could be called a box joint or a finger joint um, the, you used to buy equipment that was dovetailed, 
it's not really common anymore then the other one is a rabbit joint um, so we would just bring this piece out a dado in three eighths of an inch and set the other piece into it so we would just be nailing here um, whereas these we have a nail on every finger joint so it does require a lot of nails a nice strong box um, when I build equipment of my own I'll just have a rabbit joint so um, I wouldn't say there's any significant advantage or disadvantage to it um, we talk about hand holes we always need to make sure there's hand holds in the equipment some some equipment will just have a nailed strip around the edge and that's okay too as long as we paint that good and there's not a gap behind it to where moisture is getting in behind that strip and causing rot um, i like these hand holds uh, they're they're pretty nice allows the water to run out of them um, but you know nailed on strip works just fine uh, if we don't have those hand holds so now let's talk about configuring let's talk about configuring a hive um, there's there's a lot of different ways to run a hive uh, here in in my region a hive needs like 30 45 30 to 45 pounds of honey to make it through a winter um, successfully and we don't want every frame to be completely full of honey because the bees go into the cells head to head um, to form that cluster so they need open space as well so you can successfully winter a colony in a single deep i've done it um i will say more commonly people um, will will run more than that i typically do as well but you, you can successfully run that um, you, you may have to really pay attention in say late january or february monitoring their stores because if this hive goes into winter we we need this hive to weigh about 100 pounds to have enough bees enough honey and then account for all our wooden wear and wax um so that's that's only leaving a couple frames for them to uh, operate in we talk about a, a deep frame full of honey may have about eight pounds of honey in it so um you know eight eight sixteen thirty two pounds thirty two pounds in four frames you know, so 32 is getting on the border, 40 pounds being five frames. Um, we're, we're getting there pretty close. So like I said, you can successfully do it. Just need to make sure that, um, that we get enough honey packed into that bottom box. Um, I will say that it's better to run one deep that the bees can cover than run more boxes that the bees cannot cover. So if we have a hive going into the, uh, in the late fall that, is not able to cover that next box up you know it's just more space they they have to heat um and more opportunity for some of our pests to be a problem for us so if you have a hive that's just not able to cover all that you're better off to reduce that colony down to one box or two boxes or whatever they can cover in my opinion so the way i run my colonies typically for winter is two deeps so our hive would look i'm gonna leave that inner cover out for now but our hive would look like that for winter time um i run the three quarter inch entrance I, I don't have any problem with it um it gives me the opportunity if i do have some issues with robbing or something i can stick that um i can stick that entrance reducer right in there and reduce their entrance down so that's the way I run my colonies through the winter like I said sometimes I will reduce them down if I have a colony that's a little weaker um, some people will run a deep and a medium you know it's eight frame but still get the point a deep and a medium and and what these boxes serve as that we're talking about here is is everything that we're gonna leave for the bees every year um year in year out um this is where the queen's gonna lay this is where the honey's gonna be at and the pollen and all that that the bees use for their consumption that we're not removing so when we're considering all this think about how much a queen can lay think about how much honey they need how much pollen storage they need another configuration would be a deep and a shallow 
It's a very common setup in, in my area. It's a deep and a shallow. Uh, you can get about 30 pounds of honey in a shallow super. So 30 plus a frame or two in the bottom will give us enough honey stores to get through the winter and leave a nice open brood nest in the middle. And then that colony over the winter will slowly migrate up and up through that honey and consume that honey in that shallow soup. One of the reasons I run double deeps is I find it really convenient that I can intermix frames. If, uh, if come spring of the year, the colony is, let me grab another box here. If in the spring of the year, this colony has fully migrated up into here and they're not partially down in here, but they are all up in here. I can simply take this box off, which will have brood in it. I can take this box, set this box underneath it. Um, that's called reversing. So that's really nice to be able to do in the spring if that colony is completely in the top and we want to kind of push them back down. Um, another, and we can, we can do that with a shallow, but then you end up with a shallow super on the bottom and a deep on top and that deep has to be lifted. You know, maybe you don't want to lift it and that's why you run shallows. Um, so that would be kind of a disadvantage. Additionally, if I have one frame, um, up here that's empty and I'm wanting to kind of expand that brood nest, I'm wanting to push that queen to open up the brood space a little bit in the bottom because maybe they're trying to swarm. Um, maybe they're not really messing with the outermost frames in the top box and they're just absolutely empty and everything down here is full. I could take frames directly from the top and put them in the bottom. I can, I can intermix frames with, without trouble. We, whereas if we had a shallow or a medium on top, I'm unable to do that. Uh, because of the frame size, because we have a short frame here, they're going to draw, they're going to draw the comb off the bottom. So we can't, we can't do that. But That's so no matter how you configure your brood nest, just, um, just be aware of, uh, a couple things, how much honey they need for the winter, um, and leaving some space for that queen to lay. I think a queen in the, in the spring can, can lay quite a bit. In here, I mean, if for really efficient use of the frames, a queen technically can't lay any more than the cells available in the bottom box. But the problem is, is that a, a hive doesn't configure their self to be brewed straight across. They they configure to be in kind of a, a sphere. So um, they're typically going to have some honey and some pollen over on the sides, and that's going to constrict that ball in a little bit. And they're going to roll into that top box. So again, they technically can't lay any more than that 10 frames, 25 cells per square inch in a frame. You can do the math, um, on how many, and you know, queen can lay 2000 eggs a day. So and it's 21 day cycle. I'll, I'll let you kind of figure that out. Um, but no matter how you run this, uh, the, the other, the other thing to consider is winter. Um, I can, if I fill this top box up, I don't have to worry about it as, as far as uh, honey storage for the winter. Um, a shallow, if we have a shallow up here, then we need to um, you know, make sure it's full and a little additional in the bottom, a medium the same way. Uh, some people will run all mediums, nothing wrong with that. It's just more frames to manipulate. So if we don't wanna have to lift heavier boxes, we could run for a winter configuration in my area, I would run three mediums for a brood box. What I'm calling a brood box. This is all what we're talking about. It's the brood chamber area. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody run all shallows, so I really won't go there, but um, you could run all mediums. If you ran eight frames, you have to take that into account that you're losing two frames worth of space in each one. And we just want to, add that up so if we're running eight frames and double deep we're fine that's plenty of space um if we're running eight frames and mediums we're starting to constrict it down so say we were running a three medium colony a 10 frame well that's 30 frames if we're running an eight frame colony with 
three mediums that's 24 frames we've lost six frames so um we need to consider that <clears throat> maybe needing to go to a fourth medium again it, it depends on your operation and what you're doing and how you're managing you could run three just fine you could run a colony in one uh you know this depends on what you're trying to do with that colony if we're trying to make honey on it we need that colony to be nice and strong have a big wide open brood nest and not not uh giving them any reason to swarm or anything like that so you just kind of got to figure that out on your own in your own operation on how you're going to configure another reason i do double deeps is it's really nice in the spring when i'm splitting out nukes i can simply take frames from the top or the bottom it doesn't matter um <clears throat> a lot of times the hive will be up in the top so that's where all my broods at and i need some brood for a nuke i can pull them from the top and i can set those hives up uh, i'll do a i'll do another video on splitting but i could also isolate my queen to the bottom with a queen excluder put all the split components i want in the top and then i could simply come back and make a divide by taking this box off setting it on a new bottom board and giving them a queen so another reason i run double deeps now as we get above as we get above the brood nest let's just say um for the purposes of this let's let's say this is our brood nest maybe it's got a shallow maybe a medium maybe another deep on top if we decide to run queen excluders our queen excluder will go next and then we have to decide what are going to be our surplus supers this is honey we're going to take off for our own consumption or for sale um talked about that a little bit earlier we can run shallows um about 30 pounds of honey that you'll extract out of a out of a full capped um shallow super and when we run shallow supers um i mean when, when we run when we run shallow supers i always run after the comb is drawn out i run nine frames in the top and the reason i do that is because the the comb hangs hangs away from the um once they draw it out and cap it it will be out past the top bar and it's easier to uncap so i'll run nine frames at uh after they're drawn out but when they're foundation you have to put 10 in there or that b space is wonky and uh they'll start cross wiring comb and various things like that so shallow supers that's what i use for surplus um just simply because that's it's about 50 pounds of total weight with uh, wax honey uh, woodenware and all when it's full and that's about all I want to lift a lot of I don't have equipment to lift my my supers up um, very commonly people use mediums and don't run shallows at all um, and we could use mediums for surplus supers um, I and then and then if we talk about deeps you get the best comb drawn out uh, off a of foundation when there's a active honey flow going on so a lot of times if i'm drawing out combs to be used for the next year or for divides later in the year i will actually take a deep box and set it up here with foundation allow the bees to draw that out the extract it and then i'll use those combs later to do divides or, or various things with them so we can run deeps up here too um, just be aware that that's going to be 100 pounds when it's full of honey and um, that, that's a lot of weight to move around your commercial guys are going to have equipment that comes down and grabs those and sets those on trucks and makes that a lot easier for them to manipulate and so they have all the same equipment a lot of times with all deeps or something like that so they can move them around use those frames in other places when they go to process that honey they are if we think about this shallow there's about there's about two of these shallows in a deep so they can handle one frame like they're handling too shallow so it's, it's much more efficient so that's one of the reasons they run like that so in my area for a honey flow if i had um, most time in the spring honey flow i'll still have two deeps and then i'll have three or four shallow supers on top and that's you know typically during the spring honey flow where we have our um, tulip poplar and our clover and our vetch and, and blackberry and all that stuff blooming I'll typically make three or four shallow supers off of a good colony of bees so sometimes you make less sometimes you make more 
Um, so that's the way I configure it. So it would be two deeps and at least three shallows would be that hive configuration at the end of the day. So if we think about a colony throughout the year, if you happen to run like I do with double deeps and then you shallows for your, for your uh, surplus supers, you're going to need, you're going to need a bottom board, two deeps, a queen excluder, give it to, you know, if you decide to use them and then three shallows an inner cover and a telescoping top or just a migratory top. Um, and then you're going to need frames to fill out all of those. So, you know, you're going to need 10 frames per box. And so 20 deep frames with foundation and 30 shallow frames with foundation or if we run some other configuration, that's what it would be. So that's kind of the way you can set up your hives and kind of the basic equipment you're going to need. Um, We'll talk about PPE and uh, you know tools and stuff like that in another video. Um, this is basically just about equipment. And again, check out the frame um, and foundation videos that I'll put in the comments. Um, and we'll discuss the frames in a little more detail because there's a lot of different versions of that. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you and uh, be sure to reach out with any questions, comments. Um, I'll do my best to answer those in a timely manner. Um, share, if you don't mind, this video to anybody you know that's, that's got some of these same questions. I answer these questions a lot. So uh, um, hit that like button for me and appreciate it. Be back soon.